Sea Kayak in Scotland, the Treshnish Isles and Staffa, April 2024, Part 2. Part 2 video of our five day kayaking trip around the Treshnish Isles and Staffa off the west coast of Scotland. Please also check out Part 1 video where we set off from Alver Ferry and paddle out to Lunga and the Treshnish Isles for our second night's camp and then out to the Dutchman's Cap. The plan for the rest of the trip was to head over to Staffa and Inch Kenneth before returning to our launch spot at Ulver Ferry. So we pick up this trip at the Dutchman's Cap, seven miles out from Gometra and where there is no easy landing spot, but it's a super place to visit. The weather forecast was for very strong winds in the afternoon. With this very much in our minds, we decided not to linger out here too long and get the two hour open water crossing to Stafford completed before the weather turned nasty. As we crossed, the weather remained fairly calm, but Stafford kept disappearing into some more active weather up ahead. It was a super crossing with just a little water movement to remind us we were a long way out. After a couple of hours we reached Staffa, a fantastic island, a place I love visiting. We headed south round Staffa and into Boat Cave. The basalt columns here are very impressive. Continued anti-clockwise, dodging some sneaky waves on the reefs and then on towards the famous Fingal's Cave. This place never fails to impress me. I love the basalt columns here. Lucky with the swell conditions, we were able to kayak deep into the cave. After soaking in the atmosphere of Fingal's Cave, we headed on north, along the side of Staffa, through the narrow gully with more very impressive basalt columns and features. headed on towards the northern tip of Staffa with more small caves and volcanic features.
At the northern tip we turned and retraced our steps back towards one of the few landing spots and our planned camp spot. Camping on Staffer isn't that straightforward, but for a couple of small tents there is a suitable compact space at the landing spot, well out of sight from the path of day trippers coming over on the tour boats. Due to our very early start we had arrived early, so had plenty of time to fully explore the island. There was a stiff breeze blowing, but nothing as strong as had been forecast. Looking down into Boat Cave from above, After waiting for the tour boats to depart, we went to visit Fingal's cave on foot. Famous for its natural acoustics and also Mendelssohn's Hebridean's overture, it's certainly a very atmospheric place. A nice rainbow with some active weather in the distance. After some food, I decided to revisit the cave and see if the famous natural acoustics did anything for my harmonica playing. I suspect not. Back at the tent it was fire time, we'd gathered plenty of firewood and despite some light rain, Trevor's single match worked yet again. The fire burned well into the night and the whiskey flowed. What a super day it had been. Our GPS track day three. Day 4, a lovely sunny morning again with a light breeze. Today's plan was to cross back to Alva via Little Collinsay and then on to Inch Kenneth Island to camp for the night. That's little Colin say up ahead, about an hour away. Paddling on round the north side of Little Collinsay. This view is 
just breathtaking. We then hopped over to the south side of Olva. We found a lovely coral beach on one of the many skerries. It just begged us to stop for a break. Our next stop was at the Bothy on the south side of Olva. Back on the water we headed over to Loch Na Keel to Inch Kenneth Island with superb views and paddling conditions. Headed clockwise round Inch Kenneth looking for a camp spot. A possible camp spot on the northern end was very exposed to a strengthening and very cold wind, so we continued on to the southern end. The isthmus here on the southern tip offered a superb camp spot and more shelter. We found some extra shelter out of the wind to eat then a walk and explore of Inch Kenneth Chapel where there were some very interesting carved gravestones. Time to gather some driftwood. As the sun dipped, the fire was lit, and yes, it was a single match again. This was our last camp of the trip, and what a nice spot it was, and a lovely evening. Our GPS track day four. Day five, our final day. Another lovely morning and a leisurely start. As I've said before, even chores like washing the porridge plan are a pleasure in such places. We 
headed off around the south side of Inch Kenneth to complete its circumnavigation. The southwest side has some very interesting rock features. It was then back across Loch the Keel to Olva. Back at our start point, Olver Ferry. Well, what a super trip that was. Thanks, Trevor. I'm looking forward to the next one already. Our GPS track day five. Our trip summary.